Hey, welcome back. We're looking at another video today on our blog. Today I want to show you just point of reference in terms of how big vertebrae actually are on our, on our typical patients. So we, oftentimes we have models like this that show you know certain size of a vertebrae, the length of the spinous process and the thoracic spine, or even the width of the transverse processes in the lumbar spine, but you can see in relation this is definitely not the size of, of me, let alone another average individual. So this really isn't a representative model for the size of vertebrae that we're going to be uh, dealing with clinically. So to show you guys, we're going to actually draw a little bit the outline of vertebrae here. So you can come on over here. And for example, if we're talking about a lumbar spine, we can make a little mark right here where his spinous process is. And then just to make sure that I'm on that same vertebrae, I can come out laterally to that. And in the lumbar spine, it's generally going to be at the same level where the transverse processes are. And I can feel, I can palpate and know that I'm on bone underneath as I sink through his, his muscle here. But just to make sure that it's on the same level, I can palpate at the spinous process. And as I push down on one side, I should be able to feel that bone move if I'm on the same level, in which I do feel movement there. If I go down to a different place, I don't feel movement there. Or if I go above it and I still press on this area, I don't feel movement there. So I know that this spinous process corresponds to these TPs that I can palpate. I sink down through the soft tissue, do a little bit of wiggling around to make sure I'm on bone versus an empty space. And then from here, I can sink down laterally through tissue to make sure I'm at the width of the transverse processes here. And of course, I'm bunching up some soft tissue. So I can probably say that right about here is the edge of his transverse processes at his vertebrae. So if we basically draw a little bit, and it's about at the same level as the spinous process here, that's the width of his transverse processes. So when we're palpating, when we're palpating for position or movement, we want to make sure that we're on the more outer portion of those transverse processes versus right next to the spinous process. Here. <clears throat> in the thoracic spine, we're always taught as a guideline the rule of threes in terms of where the spinous process is in relation to the transverse process. Uh, but in anatomy, it's not always consistent. So uh, one way that we can determine that to see if we're at the correct level in terms of spinous process in relation to transverse process is feeling for movement. So again, similar to what we did in lumbar spine, uh, we're going to look at uh, trans or, or the thoracic spine here and so I'm outlining a spinous process here in his thoracic spine so I'm above it and then I'm below it right here so this is his spinous process there now in general at, I know at least that the in this part his mid thoracic spine I know that the transverse processes are going to be above this area but I'm not exactly sure how far so what we can do is come from here out and again like I did in the lumbar spine feel around for transverse processes through our wiggling around wiggle 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 and once I feel like I'm on a transverse process there I can see by coming lateral to this spinous process I can see when I push this spinous process to the right do I feel movement occurring under this thumb and so as I do that, and I push this way, do I feel that movement occurring? If I do, then I know that I'm on the right level. If I go down here, and I palpate, I don't feel movement. If I go up this far, and I, and I palpate, and I do the same thing, I don't feel movement occurring. So that I know that I was right in the first place here. That's where I feel movement happening which in this instance would correspond with the level above which is you know what we hear in the rule of threes in this part of the thorax 
Now I can come out, make sure that I'm far enough lateral. One of the things I can do is find the rib angle way out here and the rib angle here and know certainly that the transverse processes are to the inside of that. So what we'll do is outline this is the level of the transverse processes and we'll go not all the way out to where the rib angles are but fairly far out about that far. Come in, come in, and this would be the shape of his trans or of his uh, thoracic vertebrae here. So you have the two transverse processes, the spinous process like that. So it's certainly not quite the same size when we compare the model, especially in the thoracic spine, in terms of the width and the length of the spinous process. And in this case, our patient here, he's an average size guy. He's definitely not your tallest patient either. So when you get somebody that's a bigger body type, this is going to be much different than what you see on a typical model. Keep that in mind, again, when you're palpating for movement or position, position motion assessment, that that's going to be a difference. And especially in the thoracic spine, we don't always go by the rule of threes because that can be slightly different. What you want to do is you want to palpate feel for movement like we did here, and that'll give you much more accuracy in terms of your palpation. So try this on yourselves, on a friend, on your partner, and you'll be uh, slightly amazed in terms of how big vertebrae actually are. Okay? So let me know what you think on the blog, reply, give us a comment here or there, and uh, we'll keep posting different videos. Thanks.